Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we are going to discuss how can we move the data from a local SQL Server or on-premise SQL Server to the Microsoft Fabric warehouse, data warehouse using Python. Python is going to run on the local machine. On my machine, I'm going to run the Python. To run the Python, I have already installed VS code which was studio code and I am going to use SQL Acme library as well as pandas to do this job. Now I need to have a local database where I need to have this data. So what I am doing, let me explain you. So I have a local SQL server with me. From this local SQL server, I'm going to use Python code which will take my data and put it into the database, the warehouse. Now for that, I need to have warehouse in my fabric. I need to know what is the connection string? What is the user ID password? What is the type of authentication? Here, what I'm going to do is I am going to use the authentication method where it's going to open a pop-up for me to complete my multi-factor authentication. I'm using a multi-factor authentication and in case of multi-factor authentication, it opens a pop-up on the window and I'm going to allow that. So that's the method I'm going to use here. Now automation of such methods and everything we will consider in later videos. So let's look at what I have in the fabric. Let's jump onto the Microsoft fabric, which is nothing but app.powerbi.com. Now here I will go and open my workspace. My workspace is 01 fabric and inside the 01 fabric, I have quite a few warehouses and lake houses and the warehouse which I plan to use today is warehouse two. Now let me, I will open the warehouse two now in case of warehouse, as you are aware, it's SQL read, right? So it is going to open the SQL endpoint only. So once this warehouse open, I need to create a table where I'm going to bring in the data. So I'm going to, while Python can create that table in, if it is not present, but I want to create it beforehand. So let me show you one table on my local database. So this is the table I have in my local database, the DBO customer and let me select some data from here. So this is the data which I have and this is the script of the table which I have. I'm going to copy this script of the table and on my Microsoft Fabric, I'm going to run a new query and inside that query, I'm going to create this table. I'm going to add the py underscore two here. I'm going to add this additional text and I'm going to create this table because I already have a customer table. Now it is case sensitive. It should be able to create customer and capital C customer, but I'm to be on the safe side. I'm going to create this table. Now there are a few things you need to take care while you are running this Python code and which I have faced the issue. I tried a lot of combination and finally I settled down with this code, which is able to insert the data. So now I have a table. How do I get the URL? So to get the URL, you go to settings here, click on this and here you will get the connection string. You can copy this connection string and this is what you have to use in your Python code to connect to warehouse. Now when you connect to warehouse, you will also be needing your email ID and the password for which I will tell you where you need to give. Your email ID will have at the rate, your passwords might have at the rate. Then I'll also tell you what you're supposed to use in that case, because the SQL Acme code uses at the rate in the connection string. So it may conflict with that. So now let's jump onto the VS code. Now I have opened the VS code and here I removed few things. The the file next to it, the SQL py.2 contains that code, but the load SQL DW py, I've removed few things so that I can show you the code. 
I have already installed the Python and it has asked me to install Py Pandas as well as SQL Acme. For SQL Acme, I have downgraded to 1.4.47. While I was doing many experiments to get it done, this is the one where it worked. So this code is primarily divided into two parts. What are those two parts? So part one is where I am reading this data from my local SQL server. So I'm going to give the local SQL server name, its URL, its database name, credential. Now I have a local SQL server where I am using Windows authentication, so I need to do that. I need to give a SQL query where I want to select the data and then I need to read the data into Pandas data frame. I'm going to print it also to showcase you what is there. The second part of the code is the part where I'm going to load this data into our warehouse. So to do that, I need the server. I need the database. I need the driver. I need the user. I need the password, connection string, engine. And then finally, I am using the same DF, the data frame where I read the pandas data and I'm going to push it to the warehouse on fabric. So all these details will belong to fabric. So two part in the code, part one, read, part two, write, read from local, write to Microsoft fabric warehouse. So that is what we are going to do using this code. So let's begin. So you have to import pandas. I have imported pandas as PD. Then you have to also import SQL Acme as I say. Then if make sure that you already have this downgraded version. Then this is my local server where I'm saying server local host SQL Express and look at double slash. It created problem for me for few minutes because I was not giving double slash. So remember this double slash backwards backslash. Okay. And my database name is sales. Now I'm using this one. So this is how the connection string is going to be the database, uh, PY ODBC, the server, the, because I'm giving it in the angular bracket using this. So it's going to get the name from here, the database. So driver here, I'm the driver for the local SQL server. I'm using is SQL server, but I'm not going to use the same for my Warehouse, I'm going to use a different driver there. I've already checked out what works for Azure SQL and works worst for Azure SQL is the same thing which is going to work for your Microsoft Fabric Data Warehouse or Warehouse. And the trusted connection type is yes because I'm doing a Windows authentication. Now, this is the connection string. The engine we have to use sa.create engine and we have to pass this connection string. Then I'm saying a SQL query which is select star from dbo.customers and I'm reading this using pd.read SQL. So it's going to create a pandas data frame. And why I'm doing so? Because I want this pandas data frame to be utilized to just insert the code. I don't have to write a loop and everything. Okay. So that's why I'm using the pandas and it given me a lot of challenges because the other code was really simple. When I simply use this PYODBC code, it was really simple. Just because I want to use pandas, I have to use SQL Acme and that code has given me real big challenge. Now this is the code which you have to do. Server is the URL which I have shown you there. That's what you have to give. So that's the URL. Database name is the warehouse to make sure the case sensitivity you taken care. And driver is ODBC driver 17 for SQL server. That's what you have to use. User is your email. Again, use percentage 40 in the at the rate. Password is uh, Again, if give your password and use percentage 40 in place of at the rate. Now connection string very similar to the other one, but there are few additional parameters here. Now driver, I made a variable here. So I'm using that one. Now trusted connection equals to no here in this case, ampersand authentication equals to active directory interactive. And this is going to open a pop-up for me which is where I'm going to, you know, say, okay, yes, do the authentication. SQL, so engine is sa.create engine connection string. Ecoi we will make true. 
connect arguments is auto commit true because I'm going to save something and fast execute many true so that it can insert. Now to put the data into that one. So I've created this table customer py2 and we need to have the exact same name. Now please don't give square brackets. Also don't give db or dot. I have already tried out they did not work. It actually if you might have um, paid attention you might have noticed that I have a customer table which is something like this and this is created when I was doing that experiment DBO and all those. So don't do just simple table name see second time I done like this. So simply I given this name and then it was able to insert. So this is another mistake which I was doing and it took some time to correct that out. Now then when you actually what happens is if you simply give don't give any data type it's going to create table of its own and it's going to use where max which was creating problem. So I created my own D type here based on the data type. These are the same data type and I've used SQL ACME data types here like integer, 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 string 50, string 50, string 50. It's going to take care that those things there now. Then index. So I have given the name of the table con engine connection is engine engine which I created here. If exists append the data types I have described for this table index equal to fall chunk size again this created a lot of trouble for me. So finally I end up creating a chunk of 100. So I wanted a thousand chunk it did not and method method multiple that's worked out. There is one more parameter which is there here uh, which is basically for many and that did not work. The query was hanging there. It did not work out. So these are the things which I've done. This is what the code I've written and I'll try that I will be pasting this code in the description unless it gives some issue. So I'll try to paste this code into the description so that you can utilize it. Now I'm going to execute this code before I execute. Let's query what data we have in the server. So we'll go here, right click on the table, select and rows. So we don't have any data in our warehouse which I call server. So in warehouse, I don't have any data. And now I'm going to use this code. So what I've done is with my passwords and everything, I have this code available in another file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this code from another file. I have this code already with passwords and everything in this file. And I have already changed the table name and I'm expecting this to insert the data in the new table. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and run this code. So run, run without debugging. So there's an icon on the top run and I'm going to use run without debugging control F5. Okay. That's what I want to use. So run, run without debugging. What it is going to do here is going to open a pop-up for me. It has opened a pop-up on the other screen and it is asking for a password. I have given the password now it's waiting. Now it has started inserting the data and you can see the batches are moving. And while it is inserting, you can go there and also query out. So I have 6,300 rows. So 63 such chunks I'm expecting. Now this will work a little bit faster if I try avoiding printing these things like DF and all those. So it should work a little bit faster in that case. But I wanted to show you that things are happening. So that's why I kept it. And uh, so now what I'm expecting here is this data should get inserted there. Now I have not used on-premise gateway and today you might have seen that I even did not check for it whether my on-premise gateway is up and running or not. So now data is inserted. Let me go ahead and try out and checking the data is available there or not. So previously, if you've seen, there was no data. Now there is data. I won't like to know the rows. So I change this code a little bit. 6138. Now, if I run that code again, it will append it. So I will have double the number of rows. 
so now you know how can you use python code to move your data from your local on premise sql server to warehouse in microsoft fabric so why don't you go ahead and try this out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series thanks for watching this video thank you